Can I ask so, you something? Yeah, go on. Do you get like you see rappers, yeah? Yeah. Because your wit is like some it's some, like mad funny wit. Mm. And sometimes musicians are very serious. Yeah. <laughs> like I've done jokes with certain musicians and like I think it's funny. And they're yeah. like, You're big man. Stop doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Have you well, had that? Yeah. There was this one time, I suppose. So out of, I'd say 99% of any rapper that's ever been in my video, whatever, mm. all of them have like an unexpectedly good sense of humor. Yeah. In the comments, laughing or asking to repost and stuff. And that actually makes me respect an artist more when massive. They real when you when realize it, when they can take when artists can take a joke, oh it's my, a big yeah. deal. Oh, it makes a world of difference. So I'd say everyone from uh, you people like Digger D, Dutch, Heady One. Uh, even like gigs as we mentioned earlier all of them have had a great sense of humour so I've got yeah, a lot of respect yeah, yeah. Uh, I remember being at the uh, the Brits this year in February because yeah, you, were, you were presenting there as well on the yes, red carpet yeah. congratulations thank man. you mate that was, yeah, dope, that, that was that was on a side note that was so great because I'd won a competition a few years ago yeah. to uh, present at the Brits where everyone had to vote mm. for me to get there this was when I was at uni Mm. And I remember because it was quite a small production company, we were right at the end of the carpet. Yeah, no one gets there like yeah. you interview a tumbleweed. Do you remember you when I seen you at the NME Awards? Yeah, I remember that. Do you remember that? Oh yeah, I do remember. I that. was bare gas to see you because oh, I really, oh, someone I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What well, going, brother? You all right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm happy to be here because no one wanted to talk I, to me, bro. I, I no remember that. press. That's the same as what I was like at that at that thing. So yeah. for it to come full circle a few years later and to be actually doing it for the Brits was amazing because we got put right at the top of the carpet. We got to speak to everyone and this is where this encounter happened. So yeah. around that time, it would have been in February. In December, November, we dropped, uh, myself and Sideman had dropped a parody about D-Block. So yes. D-Block European Union. Because you just couldn't, yeah, you couldn't escape, uh, you couldn't escape Brexit. Yeah. So I thought, look, we've got to try and address what's happening through music. So I saw D-Block Europe's the closest thing we can come to the EU. Yeah, yeah, do you know yeah. what I mean? That was sick, by the so, way. So, oh yeah. I, <laughs> that, was, that, that video um, was so sick. Yeah, that was unexpected. <laughs> he had the hair and that. I know, and everyone fancied me with the dreads and I was like, I just can't make it happen with this hairline. Yeah, like, yeah. It's not going to happen. Stop dreaming. But um, anyway, I remember we did two parodies. Yeah. And uh, on the night of the Brits, I saw Young Ads and LB who are staggeringly tall. So I saw them in the flash shoots and I thought, oh, I'm going to, they, they were speaking to like a, a camera crew before us. And I thought, well, hopefully they come over, we can have a little chat. Anyway, got distracted, interviewed someone else. Next thing I know, they were all the way down the carpet. Mm. But then I feel this sort of nudge on my arm. And uh, it's, it's uh, the third member, Little Pino, I think his name is. Mm. Um, I know I make it sound like a wine, but I think that's how you say his name. <laughs> yeah. And um, he said to me oh i think he said something along the lines of oh we don't really like what you're doing with our flow mm. now because i'm there with the brits and the the sort of camera crew are sort of looking i'm thinking i can't afford there to be drama so i went oh what's that mate and he went he said we don't like what you're doing with our flow and i looked at him again i just pretended not to and i was like what's that again <laughs> And he sort of looked at me and then just went and just dropped it and went, anyway, you having a good night? I was like, yeah, I'm having a great <laughs> night. It's fantastic. And he was like, I was like, hopefully you win. And he sort of disappeared. And I was like, thank God, because I was like, I'm about to have my first beef on the red carpet at the Brits. So I don't know. I don't know whether there's love, that whether there's love or dislike there because a video shortly after young ads commented on it with laughing faces, but maybe didn't know it was me. So I say that's the, I say apart from little Pino, everything's been pretty plain sailing. Apart from the P Pino oh, shape bump. Man. It's so funny because <laughs> when you're in that position, yeah, mm. it's like, I remember what I used to do this character with like, I say character, but I remember doing stand up and I'd, I'd get these, these really bad looking teeth, mm. sunglasses. And I'd be like, oh, I used to do this Getz impression of Getz, right? And I remember like, I'm, I'm doing this impression. Everyone's like, bro, that impression is sick, bro. That impression is sick. Mm -hmm. This is at a time where, Grime is still underground. It's not kind of like 2016 when it starts emerging. It's still, it's how, it's how drill is now, basically. Mm. So, you know, I'm doing this and everyone, and I'm doing it at a comedy show and everyone's like, oh man, people are at him. Gets, have you seen Mo's sketch? Like, have you seen what he does on stage? And mm. everyone's like, that is so funny. That, and I'm getting real MCs tell me this. Mm -hmm. Bruv, that impression you do of Gets, spot on. So I was like, oh, I was going through the motions, isn't it? And then, I remember there was a show. It was like this show called Sunday Show. But it was like this kind of award show, basically. So I was doing 
I was, I think I was doing stand up. Mm-hmm. So coming on after was gets, right? <laughs> so the stage is here. In order to get into the stage, you've got to go through this door here and there's a ramp that leads up this stage, right? So I was like, cool. I can't, um, that's someone said, no, you're going to be on in a bit. I've got back. Before I get to this stage, gets is there with Kano <laughs> and like 10 guys, yeah? Okay. I couldn't not walk past them. Mm-hmm. They're there. So I was just like walking past and I managed to walk past him just about to go on stage. All I heard was, yo, Mo, yo, Mo, come here, bruv. And I was like, oh, oh, who's that? Sounds like Gets. So I was just <laughs> smiling. Yo, what's going on, Gets? He's saying, mm. he's like, yo, come here, man, come here, man. Everyone's all smiling. But like, the rest of the guys are just like, just, just chilling, like. Mm. And the part of me is like, oh, whoa, what's Kano's there? <laughs> like, I'm like, oh, what are the chances? Yeah. <laughs> like, get down there. He puts his arm around me. He's like, all right, that's get you doing, man. Very funny, man. I'm like, cheers, man. Thanks, man. I'm big fan, yeah. man. Yeah, hear what? But you got to stop doing that, though, you know? So I'm like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm laughing. <laughs> yeah. Of course, man. Nah, nah, seriously, though. Stop doing that, though, bro. <laughs> All right, man. Cool. <laughs> the grip's getting tighter. And then, and then he left. He's like, have a good set, though. Smash it still. <laughs> cool. I was just on stage just, like, trying to tell jokes. But in my head, <laughs> I'm just like... I might get rushed if I go back down, you know. I might just have to just stage dive as a comic. <laughs> knock, knock. Who's there? <laughs> Did you do the Getz impression that that? No, up? no, no, no. It, from that day on, it finished. It stopped. <laughs> but the beautiful thing is when I started doing the videos, like mm-hmm. he was one of the people that, you know, like now whenever I see him and stuff, he's just, you know, I think the good thing is now the scene has come a lot full circle where we do have people doing parodies of musicians and the musicians mm. are like raw find it funny but this is how when i look at american comics and they might kind of take the piss out of some of the rappers and stuff that is how good your craft is if someone is doing some kind of impression of you and something that is how big your star is now mm. that someone is oh, kind of got the creativity so i'm going to do an impression of you because you're that you're that you're you know you're that different that i want to do an impression of you and, and it's always got to be at a level of where you're laughing you want them to be laughing with them. That's for right. Example. So when I was doing the Gets thing, people are laughing at me, mm-hmm. but they're also laughing with Gets. With Gets is watching. I want you to laugh with him if you're mm-hmm. in a room. Not be like, oh my god, that is so funny. Like, look, he's doing you. Mm-hmm. I want you to all be in a room and all laugh together. You've got to be in on the joke. That's yeah. what I've learned. Um, uh, and in a lot of uh, meetings that I've had, where it's been about TV shows, and it's been about, oh, who could your characters meet? You know, what could they do? Mm-hmm. I was taught that you know you mustn't just attack somebody through humor who doesn't deserve it definitely so a tommy robinson or a nigel farage or a pretty patel mm. in many cases their actions affect and impact so many negatively yeah that to go okay i'm going to do something that sort of teases you a little bit mm. there's enough justifiable uh, license for you to go cool you're going to be at the butt of the joke because you've done some pretty nasty things as well yeah, yeah whereas yeah, to go up to a random uh, uh, in character to be like, oh, look how silly you are and stuff. It actually reflects badly on you for yeah, sure. Yeah, massively. Um, and that's why I, another encounter that I am very, that I'll always remember is when I actually met Unknown T for the first time. Okay. This was at a Wingstop event. And uh, I remember being there with, I think it was with my manager. Um, and um, we were there and I remember walking up the stairs with my little box of like un- unseasoned wings. Yeah. And I could see this huge <laughs> group behind us. And a uh, huge group <laughs> behind us, hoods up and stuff. And I thought, oh, I don't know, you know, it must be a celeb because they've got lots of people around them. Yeah. So anyway, we're eating now. And um, I got this nudge and I looked and this guy was like, oh, I'm Unknown T's manager. And I was like, mm. oh, wicked, good to meet you. Thinking, didn't I didn't know Unknown T was there. Mm. And then he was like, oh yeah, and Unknown T's over there. Mm. So I now looked and I saw him and he sort of like nodded. Nothing to suggest he was either like with, with me or against me. Yeah. And um, <laughs> you got to edit out that voice break. Because <laughs> that <laughs> was embarrassing. <laughs> That's a fear that I had on the day. Um, anyway, so I walked over to the table and sat down and it was him. The unknown t- so it was a manager, unknown to this guy who had like a scar literally going 360 of the way around his head. Mm. So I thought, right, you know, I'm sure I could walk out with one of them scars if I'm not careful. Yeah, so, yeah. Anyway, I sat down and, and then t- I said to her, and then t- I was like, you know, so what do you think? And he was like, I like it. You know, he's like, when we first, me and my boys first saw it, we we're thinking, what's this? But 
it's how he, I remember him saying, you know, it's, it's drawn attention to what I'm doing. Mm. So I'm cool with it. And as soon as I heard that, I was like, okay, I'm happy now because you can see that the character is not even made as an attack on you. Yeah, it's yeah. literally, it's meant to encapsulate what happens when a certain group of posh people in society go, oh, you know, li- literally hate when black people do this, literally. And then they see it popping and they're like, oh my God, like I've always loved drill. Like drill is literally popping. I like, love it. Mm. I was trying to be that guy, that culture vulture who is in, personified in this character who goes, yeah, drill, band drill, band drill, band, band drill. What a nun tea, Homerton B's popping. Oh yeah, love drill, love drill. That's what yeah. I made the character for. So the fact he could see that, I was like, that felt like a, an accomplishment. It was like a win. Mm. Especially for your creativity, because it lets you know that, oh, rah, well, if you like it, then hopefully there's more people that like it. So for your creativity, it does so much for your confidence, because you're like, oh, yeah. wow, like, cool, man. Like mm. When I started doing the, the, the geezer stuff, cut the cans, that, you know, the people who liked it the most were the, the lads. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, especially when I was with a lot of my friends, we go to wireless and say, oh, what's happening, mate? Mate, that cup of cans, I'll show it to my dad. He's a taxi driver. Mm. Absolutely love my Literally, if I'm in central London, taxi drivers will stop in the middle of West End. Mo, what's happening, mate? <laughs> cup of cans. Yeah. But because I know, especially amongst that community of black taxi drivers, mm. that is that kind of character. So... I know, especially when I was doing it, it wasn't to to mock those people as, as geezers. And the, the beautiful thing is when I create my characters, it's whatever you want it to be. Mm-hmm. So sometimes I, I read stuff and it's like, yeah, it's really cool because Moses, like black guy who's pretending to be white. And I'm like, no, it's not it. <laughs> no, no. But that's your interpretation of it. Yeah. And that's what I love about it. Mm-hmm. A geezer is a geezer. Mm-hmm. Like you can be black and be a geezer. You can be white and be a geezer. You can be Asian. You can be whatever you want. But so there's a person that sees that character and they can say, oh, actually, no, Mo is actually a black guy who is, he, he thinks he's white, but he's actually black. He doesn't know his culture. And I'm like, nope, that's how you've seen it. So I let every yeah. audience member see it how they want. But mm. then other characters like Cavani, that is just your little brother. Yeah, That is someone's little brother, your little cousin. You might not have grown up with a little brother, but he has the traits that you might see in yourself mm-hmm. or see in someone else. So, I, I think that's what's really nice, like talking to you, how you develop your characters and your creativity, you know, because it's really refreshing when, like, I, I like this is for me, like, this this is like my nerdy stuff. Yeah. Of, like, when I can talk about creative aspects of how people do it, mm. I get mad nerdy in it. And sometimes people listen to this pod, they're like, bro, I thought you man would just be bossing characters all day, bro. bro <laughs> this, is, this is deep, bro. It's quite exhausting <laughs> to, it's, it's actually, it can be quite exhausting to be in character because you really got to, you know, you really got to embody them a lot. You know, for me, when I do, um, what's it now? When I do my newsreader, my mm. face really aches afterwards because I'm always <laughs> fixing my face and Bussy speaking with Barty <laughs> Crease, yeah. That was actually, if you want to nerd out about this one, I remember making that character in uh, just as to fill a gap one day on my feed because I was yeah. thinking not a lot's going on apart from Wimbledon yeah. uh, let me do a news report about if a, a black player won Wimbledon and I yeah. use this news reporter so I put on my white shirt and stuff and I was made the sketch and I thought okay what's the funny thing I can say at the end because I'm obviously poking fun at the news is there <laughs> one last dig I can have and I was like okay mm. I'll call this news reporter Barty Chris <laughs> for two reasons number one it, you know, it just sounds funny. <laughs> but number two, I thought to myself, if this character, for any reason, ever gets famous yeah. and is interviewed on TV, I will be able to force the newsreaders to say Barty Crease. And lo and behold, on Sky News, 8 p.m., uh, sorry, 8 a.m., one afternoon, one morning, the news reporter was like, um, okay, so we're interviewing the um, online comedian Manu Chihuahua, who's Barty Crease, has gone viral <laughs> recently. I was like, yes, it has. And then it gives me room to come back and be like, she was like, you know, so tell me about the character. Well, yes, if we dive into my Barty Crease. <laughs> <laughs> if we really bust open the Barty Crease character and just begin to explore that Barty Crease, we find actually there's a... <laughs> oh, that's so funny. <laughs> yeah, so I always give your characters a name like that. You know what's so funny, yeah? Because when I first seen the news report character that you done, right? Mm-hmm. I watched it and I'm like, all right, this is really funny. And I was like, Barty Crease. That's a, that's a different name for that. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like, why do you call it Barty? Barty Crease! It's Barty Crease! <laughs> <laughs> the way it fully do, though, 
told me, I was like, oh, that's so sick. Man called him like as if his name's Barty. <laughs> Chris, bro. When I clocked that, I said, nah, man. I felt like I had literally found the Matrix. Like, I was like, I'm in the Matrix. I found it. He's meant to be called Barty Chris, but it's Barty Chris, <laughs> fam. Genius. That, uh, for you. me, is like... Mm. <laughs> 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 Oh man. Oh, would you man?